US 36 runs straight across the state of Missouri from Hannibal to St. Joseph. It runs about halfway between Interstate 70 and the Iowa state line. West of Macon and east of Chillicothe, Route 5 turns north. You go under the tracks that were once the Hannibal-St. Joe Railroad line, and you're in the town of Laclede, Missouri. It's not much today, population about 400. A sleepy and mostly empty little downtown, and it would be just like a lot of other nearly forgotten and bypassed farm towns, except for one thing that keeps Laclede, Missouri in the guidebooks. This is where John Pershing grew up. He was once one of America's best-known military heroes. A lot of people can name several Civil War generals, a list of admirals and generals of World War II. But when it comes to generals of World War I, there is Black Jack Pershing, and that's about it. It was Pershing who led the American troops into Europe's war. It was Pershing who rode in the parade after victory in Paris. And it all started in a little town in north central Missouri. John Pershing's father had come to this part of Missouri with the railroad and became a successful businessman in town until the Panic of 1873. And then times for the family of 11 got quite a bit tougher. They lost the businesses but they kept the house and a small farm. You can tour the home today and a small museum in the old one-room schoolhouse where John Pershing taught before he went to West Point. And you can gaze up at what was once one of the best known faces and postures in America. Like his statue, Pershing in life was stern, ramrod straight, commanding authority. He looked the part of the military leader, but he earned his place in history as the commander-in-chief of the American Expeditionary Force in the First World War. A movie in the Visitor Center tells the story that just about everybody in America used to know. For Pershing, the challenges in France were monumental. He had the task of shaping and training an army force, which in a year and a half would expand to two million men. Today we take for granted the ability to fight a war halfway around the world. But it had never been done before on this scale, and it was General Pershing's job to make it work. One of his greatest conflicts came with the Allies themselves, who wanted to use the new American troops as replacements in their own divisions. But Pershing held out for an integral American army, which would fight under its own flag and its own commanders. The prestige of the nation itself would stand or fall on the performance of that army in the test of battle. Pershing did hand over some divisions to Allied command in the spring of 1918 to help counter an attack that might have brought a German victory. But from July on, Americans fought as their own army and helped bring about the Allied victory in November 1918. In 1919, Black Jack Pershing returned to the United States a national hero. World War I, the Great War, the details, the names, it's all receding back now into history. Visitors might have once come here to pay their respects to the great man. Now with no train stopping, no interstates nearby, the site draws military history buffs, curious passers-by who saw the sign, and those who have chosen to explore the back roads. We just, you know, we didn't plan anything. We just. We went to Hannibal, we stayed there for what, a day and a half, two days, and then we got on the road and came across 36 and uh, said, you know, we'll stop here, we'll stop there. So we're probably going to go to the wooden bridge after this, I think. Isn't it? Did you know it was here? Have you always known it was No, here? I did not. I didn't, matter of fact, I don't think I even knew that Pershing was born in Missouri. The formal parlor would have been used for weddings, funerals, visiting dignitaries. Children probably wouldn't have been allowed to play in there because that's where the Most folks will stay for an hour or two and move on. But one man found something here a few years ago that made him want to leave his home in California and move to Laclede, Missouri. 
Denzel Haney found this historic site by chance, or maybe it was fate. A World War I history buff, he was in Kansas City on a vacation, but the museum he wanted to visit was temporarily closed. So he took out his map, and there, just a few hours away, was the Pershing Historic Site. And as I was taking the tour, I seemed to be telling them more about General Pershing than they were telling me. So uh, they had mentioned the administrator was getting ready to retire and that I should apply for the position. And so I did, and it took about a year, and uh, here I am. I uh, moved here about a year ago. And, and from California, in from California to right. north central Missouri. Right. It's a big change. Uh, it's a big change, but it was something that it, it was, I guess, kind of due in my life. Uh, uh, I, I gained about as much knowledge and information about General Pershing and World War I that I could stand, and I just had to put it to work. Let's go in and show me around. Sure. This is the, uh, the school that he had taught at. Is this right? is the Prairie Mound School. It was located uh, nine miles south of this location. General Pershing taught here for two semesters. He had no dreams of, of military uh, career at all. He uh, always set his sights on being a lawyer. Um, it was by chance that Pershing heard about the West Point entrance exam from his sister. He took it. He tied for the top score and answered correctly the tie-breaking grammar question. That's what sent him to West Point and on to a military career that included the final campaign against Geronimo, Cuba's San Juan Hill and the Spanish-American War, fighting insurgent Muslim tribes in the Philippines, a military observer in the Russo-Japanese War, and leading troops into Mexico in the feudal campaign to capture Pancho Villa. There was great personal tragedy in his life as well. In 1915, a fire killed his wife and three daughters. Only a son survived. It's all here in the little museum in the hometown of the school teacher who would go on to lead America into the Great War, the war to make the world safe for democracy. To the men of the AEF, who knew him best by the nickname Blackjack, he was no myth. By now, Pershing had long carried the nickname, which probably came from the fact that he had commanded African-American troops, Buffalo soldiers, out west. It was probably not originally complimentary. But over the years, the name Black Jack had taken on a forceful, colorful quality that, like the man himself, inspired awe and respect. Pershing retired in 1924, the highest-ranking officer in American history, the equivalent of a six-star general. At the start of World War II, he offered his services and was satisfied with a symbolic hero's role. This war would be led in large part by those who had served under him in France. Many of those generals would serve as his pallbearers when he died at the age of 88 in 1948. For such was the magic of the Pershing name and the strength of the Pershing character that Americans of all ages could feel that their own lives had in some important way been bound up in his. Four years after Pershing's death, the state of Missouri purchased the home in Laclede where he had grown up so that it could establish a state historic site. More than 50 years later, almost all the World War I veterans are gone, and Black Jack Pershing is not the household name he once was. But Denzel Haney doesn't think the general or his war will be forgotten. He reminds us that the Civil War was once slipping from our memory. But the centennial in the 1960s brought a resurgence of interest and the start of many of the battle reenactment groups. Haney expects the same thing to happen with World War I as we approach its centennial in 2014. And people dig into its historical details and once again, search out its heroes. <laughs>